and welcome back everyone. Now coming up this Saturday, pretty big day. The Kentucky Derby is being held and uh, we've got a lot of folks locally who do like to help out and have a little bit of fun with that. If you're planning a big derby party, Andrew Lacombe is live this morning uh, joining us at the Landmark for one, get some great ideas for food. Andrew? Good morning, Vicki. We are here at the Landmark, like you said, and we're going to be learning all morning about some drinks and some foods and some desserts that will make your derby celebration really special now. I went to KentuckyDerby.com this morning and just kind of checked out uh, what things people do for derby parties. I'll just say I've never been uh, to a derby party. I think I've watched the race once or twice, uh, the, the greatest two minutes in sports, like you said, but I've never really gotten to the whole spirit of it. I've had, I have had a mint julep before. We're going to be checking those out coming up later from uh, one of the mixologists here at the Landmark Inn and uh, looking at some appetizers too. Now, like I said, I went to KentuckyDerby.com and got some, looked at some ideas for some parties, um, you know, getting all kinds of themes. It's just a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of magic, they say, that's involved in the horse racing, the sports, the fashion, the style. And uh, some contests, I thought these were some interesting ideas, uh, you know, giving away, a lot of people wear their, their hats, giving away uh, some, some prizes to people at your party for hats. Also, uh, you know, just creating a feel for the Kentucky Derby, roping off the entrance, making a... Good morning again, Vicki. We're at the North Star Lounge again, and earlier we made a mint julep, a uh, big derby drink, and now we're going to look at some food and a dessert. I'm joined by Joe, the cake guy here at the Landmark. Joe, thanks for being here. No problem, and, uh, and you've been to the derby a few times, so just tell me about the atmosphere and what people try to create at their parties. Well, the actual race itself is less than 30 seconds long, so the derby day is more about the celebration being with friends, uh, excess you know, you drink a lot, you eat a lot of food, the ladies wear big fancy hats. It's more about having fun and it's a day of celebration for a 30 second sporting event. Okay, so tell me about, about what uh, has been prepared here and, and why they're perfect for a derby party. Well, uh, what our chef Brian has done uh, today is kind of take the flavors of the derby and incorporate them in things you can make at home. So. Like here we have traditional tea sandwich, which is a very southern thing, um, cucumber, cream cheese, toast points, and he's added a little bit of um, Tabasco sauce to kind of give it a kick. In front of that we have a traditional pork slider, but he's made uh, the barbecue sauce with a Kentucky bourbon and a um, Tabasco sauce in it and then topped it with a zucchini coleslaw instead of cabbage. In front, down south, light and cool for Derby Day. We have um, watermelon points that have been sprayed with whiskey. And then we have a little whipped feta cheese and a little jalapeno and mint leaf kind of to give it that punch. And then here we have a huge southern staple. That's our cornbread. Brian's in it with a little fresh corn added to it, a little bit of jalapeno. And then you cut the top off the cornbread, and he's added a caramelized onion with a balsamic reduction to it. All right, I think I'm going to try this, uh, the, the middle of the cornbread, because it just seems... This is something I've, I've never seen before. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Yep, take the top right okay. off. And that's it. It's a, an easy thing to make at home. And then you just add that kick to it. Same thing with, uh, you know, the cake we had here. Um, you take your traditional chocolate cake mix, and if you're baking at home, it's okay to use a box mix. I am not a bourbon drinker. I'm more of a Southern Comfort drinker. So we've added Southern Comfort um, instead of our liquid. A simple chocolate buttercream, and then we have a bourbon pecan on the top and some fresh derby rose leaves that have been candied. Um, and that's what it's about, is being adventurous. Mix the flavors, take what you like and add that southern twist to it, and then sit back and eat a lot. Those onions are pretty sweet from the cornbread. Now, I'm willing to bet that this is going to be a little a little more sweet, so I'm going to yes. try one of these. Yeah, they're yeah. actual real rose petals that you candy. It's very, very simple to do, and it kind of gives it like a floral sugar finish. A lot of and sugar. If you, yeah, dip it in the chocolate ganache. It's even better. Okay. I'm going to try that quickly here. Wow, they're uh, definitely yeah, real they're, rose petals. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to stick my finger in the... You're allowed, I'm going to give you free okay, range. Okay, never get to do that. So yeah, if you do it at one of the weddings, you'll get in trouble. Not for me, more so the bride. But um, yeah, Derby Day is just about enjoying yourself. Have a good time. Kick back. Make sure you do stuff that's easy, that you can do early at home, and so you can sit back and enjoy the party. Spending too much time in the kitchen just means you don't get to enjoy the food you've made yourself. So that's my biggest advice for Derby Day. All right. And have a julep while you're cooking. <laughs> that sounds good. Thanks, Joe, for being no here. No problem. Anytime. I'm not going to shake your hand because I've still got uh, a lot of pecan. I'm just going to keep eating it. And uh, we'll go back to the studio now, live in Marquette. Andrew Lacombe, TV6 News. Red carpet. So I guess there's a lot of celebrities that attend this race. So uh, you can uh, get thinking. you got a week now. Coming up on Saturday is the Derby. So you can 
think about how you're going to celebrate now. We'll be back at the landmark. We're up in the uh, in on the sixth floor. We're looking out here. You can see. Well, I don't think you can see at home, uh, but that is uh, the view from the top of the landmark. We'll be back here later on this morning. And so we'll head back to the studio now live in Marquette. Andrew Lacombe, TV6 News. All right. Thank you very much, Andrew. And I'll tell you what. Vicki, there's one drink that's been synonymous with the Derby for over 100 years, and that's the mint julep. So we're going to learn how to make that this morning. I'm joined now by Kate Andreg, the mixologist up here uh, at the Landmark. And so, Kate, just tell me uh, why this drink is, is so popular and what, what people really enjoy about it. Okay. Uh, the Kentucky Derby has always been affiliated with the mint julep. They've been serving the mint julep at the Derby for since the 1930s and they serve about 120,000 mint juleps every year at the Kentucky Derby. So it's, it's definitely the iconic Kentucky Derby cocktail. All right, well, you want to show us how, how it's done? Sure. So to make a mint julep at home, you want to start with some French, uh, excuse me, fresh mint. Uh, you use about four sprigs per cocktail. So you just pull the mint leaves off the stalks. Don't use the stalks to make the, the cocktail. And you can just discard the stalks. Uh, a, a, Mint julep is traditionally made from just four ingredients. There's water, sugar, mint, and bourbon. So make sure you're using a bourbon whiskey because that's the, the whiskey that comes from Kentucky. So you have four mint sprigs, about a teaspoon of water, and that just helps to muddle the mint. Um, to muddle the mint, you just, you're just you just bruising the mint leaves themselves to just release the essential oils that are contained therein. And uh, about a teaspoon of sugar. So before you add the whiskey, you're going to use a muddler. Um, if you have a muddler at home, it's a, a very useful uh, bar tool. But if you don't have a muddler, you could always use a wooden spoon or um, even a plastic spoon would work. And you don't need to muddle it too hard, just enough to, so that you can really smell the mint. And then uh, here at the hotel, we have the, the little handy things that measure out ounces for us. It's a two and a half ounces of bourbon per julep. So um, that comes out to about five tablespoons if you wanted to just measure it out at home. So there's one ounce. And two and a half. Uh, the, the other thing that is uh, very particular about a mint julep is that it's always um, made with crushed ice. We have a, ha a handy ice crusher here at the hotel. Um, and if you don't have something like that at home, you could always just um, put some ice cubes in a plastic bag, wrap it in a towel, and feed it with a rolling pin. That would work. So you're going to add some ice to this cocktail glass. Pardon me, I'm just going to grab my shaker here. If you don't have a shaker at home, you can just stir it, and that would be fine. And this one we're going to strain over the crushed ice. You can strain through a, just a mesh strainer at home, and that would be acceptable as well. And garnish with a fresh mint leaf. And serve it with a straw. All right. Really easy. Well, I might, can I, can I try it? Yeah, okay, help I'll yourself. See, see how I it's out. It's, what is, this is originally a what kind of a drink? Uh, I was just going to say that it was, um, I was doing a little bit of research about a julep, and it's traditionally a, a breakfast drink, where okay. it was originally a breakfast drink. So. You can definitely taste the mint and the whiskey there. Now, for people who don't like whiskey, I don't, you have no time to show it, but um, another drink that people can make. Is with cucumber? Sure, yeah. I, um, if you wanted to do something with vodka and cucumber or gin and cucumber, um, using the mint, that would be a little more refreshing, a little lighter, and people might enjoy that. All right. Well, thanks so much, Kate, for showing us how a mint julep is made. We're going to post this video and the recipe on our website later on today, so you can check that out. We'll be back here later on looking at some appetizers that are good for the derby and, and, and a cake that you could uh, make at home, too, that would get really uh, add to your derby party along with these drinks. So thanks for being here, Kate. Thank you. And uh, we're going to head back to the studio now, live in Marquette, Andrew Lacombe, TV6 News. All right.